I've had a lot of people ask me to make a video talking about what you should take with you on your first trip to space in space exploration. My somewhat clickbait answer to that is nothing, but there's quite a bit more to it than that. Let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. Welcome to Lawrence Place Factorio. In space exploration, most of your science has to be done in space. It's made in special machines that can only be placed down on space terrain, which tends to mostly be the scaffolding you place, a sort of space landfill. Because of this, you're going to find yourself getting through a lot of resources up there, so before you even think about leaving Norvis, especially if you're playing single player, I recommend you get a good solid infrastructure base set up that can defend itself, can build cargo rockets without needing any help from a player, and it can supply plenty of raw materials. You don't need to build cargo rockets quickly at this point, even if it takes 10-15 minutes, that'll probably be okay, at least as long as you can plan. The next thing is to build a system to load your rocket. Personally, I like to build my cargo rocket silo next to my main bus, since that already has all of my raw materials and intermediates on it, so you can just run all of the belts into the rocket. If you haven't already, I recommend that you watch my video on interplanetary logistics to see my recommended method of loading a rocket with what you need, but in short, I set each belt to only flow when there's a signal of less than zero of the relevant item, then merge all the belts together into the rocket. Link the rocket silo and your signal receiver up to the input of a decider combinator, and pass all signals through if the rocket is ready, then pass these onto the belt. This will help to prevent you shipping excess supplies up. We'll set up communication with that receiver later. This system works great for all your basic resources and intermediates, but it's not so great for finished items like pumps, tanks or inserters. But by this point, you should have discovered a weapons cache. Uh, check the journal if you haven't found it. And this also contains a requester chest. You won't be able to build these yet, but you can use ones you find out in the wild. Place one down next to the rocket with an inserter to load the rocket, add an arithmetic combinator next to it, and then run the signal from your decider combinator to the arithmetic. Multiply all signals by minus one, and then feed that into the request chest. Now, set the chest request from the circuit network. This will work, however the chest will request a lot of the resources that are better delivered by the bus, and we only want buildings to be brought in by logistics bots, so add a constant combinator, link it to the output of the arithmetic combinator. This constant combinator should have a very large negative quantity of all of the resources that are being brought in from the bus. This will ensure that bulk deliveries of resources come through the bus, but the relatively small quantity of other items can still be delivered by bot. I would also recommend setting up a system next to the rocket to make life support canisters and also space assembly machines, since these can be built down on Norvis. Finally, you're going to need a fair amount of lube up in space, so I would recommend setting up a barreling plant that also passes that to the rocket. Generally, in Factorio, the more something has been processed, the denser it is. So, two stacks of iron ore become one stack of iron plates. Four stacks of copper and two of iron makes one stack of green circuits, and, and so on. This means that as long as you know what you're going to need up there, you're best off transporting things in the most processed form you can. This saves space in the rocket, allowing you to bring more stuff up with each launch. Sadly, in Space Exploration 0.6, you can no longer build space scaffolding, space belts or space pipes on the ground, so you'll need to ship up the raw materials for those. So, we've now got a rocket that can be loaded with all of your goodies, but don't put anything into it for now. Make sure you're wearing a thruster suit, and grab a few stacks of life support cans and some solid rocket fuel so you'll be able to breathe and move around in space. You'll need that. I would also advise having a personal roboport or two in your suit's grid, and some construction bots, but this isn't vital. I really wanted to send you off to space with literally nothing, but unfortunately I can't. You will need to take a signal transmitter with you, and I recommend packing some warehouses and some constant combinators. If you want to use my space bus system, that will require a single yellow warehouse and a number of red ones. Hopefully by now you'll have launched a few satellite rockets in order to get the satellite telemetry for the rocket science, and so will have discovered Kalidas Asteroid Belt 1. If not, launch a few more until you find it. I only had to launch four of them in order to discover it. This is where we're going to go first, so let's get into the rocket, set a destination and head over! At this point we can only head to the general vicinity, but later rockets will have better defined landing positions. So off we go. The 
reason we're going here instead of Norvis orbit is because there's a wrecked spaceship there with a lot of very useful parts stored in chests inside it and these will make it much easier to get your new space station established and give you some new toys to play with. Once you've landed you can gather up the remains of your rocket if you want and then fly over to the wrecked ship and clear up all the wreckage. Even the scrap is useful, you'll be able to process it later, but you're mostly here for the gear that's way beyond your current tech level. You'll want to make some basic repairs to the ship before you go. Replace the doubt destroyed engine, fix the broken walls and so on, but all the bits and pieces you need for that are tucked away in the chests inside it. Make sure you replace the floor on the right hand side, otherwise you won't pass the integrity check. Once you've got everything ship shape, you can fly your newly recovered ship back to Norvis orbit. To do this, open the ship's control console and do an integrity check. If you haven't fixed the ship properly, any problem areas will flash in red, fix them and then repeat until the ship passes inspection. Compare it against the other side of the ship if necessary. Now it's happy, set the destination to Norvis orbit, click launch and then engage. This will be your first experience with a spaceship. Enjoy the ride. Don't worry about the meteors. This ship is more than capable of defending itself against anything it runs into. The engines will flicker on and off, but this is just because you don't have enough power from the uh, solar panels, but it's still perfectly safe. Note that whilst this ship is capable of landing on planets, it can't take off from them again. So if you do land it anywhere, you won't be able to use it again until you're capable of building booster tanks. Soon you'll get to Norvis orbit, where there's another ruin for you to plunder. I recommend anchoring just off to the side of the main asteroid and running a cleanup operation, demolishing almost everything that you see here. We can decide what we want to use and how we want to arrange things later, but for now let's just get it tidied up. The spaceship has some construction bots in its roboport, and if you get the yellow chests out of the box in the spaceship then you can use these for all the loot to be put in. Make sure you don't demolish the radar construction pylon in the middle or the big solar panels up in the top right, but the rest of it can all be gathered up and stored for later. Unfortunately, the deconstruction planner doesn't seem to like dealing with ruins, so you may have to do those by hand. You can also help the bots out with picking up the chests if you want to. Once you've got some space to play with, put down a rocket landing pad. There will be one in the spaceship. Also, put down a yellow warehouse for the landing pad to empty into, and a row of red warehouses moving away from that. A roboport to monitor the whole thing, and a signal transmitter. You'll also want any of the solar panels you've recovered to power everything, but for now, just link up the spaceship to the construction pylon with one of the pylons you recovered with it. This will give you plenty of power to get you started. Name the transmitter's signal to something sensible, like from Norbit, and then connect it to the roboport and landing pad with red or green cables, then set the roboport to report the available supplies. Note that if you place cables from the navigation satellite view, then they're free. You can use the From Norbit signal to request the supplies that you want to bring up to orbit. Place a couple of constant combinators down and link them up, and then start adding the resources you would like to receive as negative numbers. Once everything's programmed up here, press U to open the Universe Explorer, select Norvis, allowing you to view your home planet with a navsat. Open up the rocket and set it to fly to Norvis orbit, to land at the landing pad you've just placed and to launch automatically once it's full. And check that the network name on the signal receiver matches the transmitter in orbit. Now you'll have a steady stream of the resources you need being brought up, with more brought up to replenish them as you use them up. This brings us on to what I think people were really meaning with the what should I bring into space question. At the start, you'll want to build large quantities of space scaffold, space belts and space pipes for your expansion, which means you'll need huge quantities of steel, low density structures, heat shielding, small motors, copper, plastic and glass. You'll also need lube, which unfortunately at this stage will have to be shipped up in barrels. You'll also need to set up the systems to build everything, so add space assembly buildings, inserters, pylons, substations, and, and so on. And I would suggest bringing up some additional solar panels as well. 
Finally, all these advanced re researchers will still use the basic Norvian science packs, so you'll want a nice healthy supply of those coming up as well. That will be enough to just get you started, but you're also going to then want to start making space science, and that requires a few more things, specifically blue circuits, rocket fuel, stone and cosmic water. Yes, cosmic water is another new thing to worry about, but the good news is that's just water with a bit of lube mixed in to stop it freezing and boiling in a vacuum, and there's a convenient patch of ice on your asteroid which you can mine to get to the water. Oh, but I'm afraid that melting ice requires you to do some research into industrial furnaces, cryonite and then ice processing. <laughs> Luckily, that spaceship we collected has some science packs in a chest to get you started. I'd recommend doing those three researches first so you can start making your own science packs, but you know, it's up to you. Melting ice and anything else that would normally be done in a chemical plant on the ground will now need a biochem facility up in space, but happily you get one of those in the spaceship as well. Doing science in space needs a different type of lab of course, but there's one in the detritus from the space station and another one in the spaceship, so that should be more than enough to get you started. From here on out, you're on your own, but if you want to see how I got started in space, you can watch the summary videos from the end of series 1 where I explain how my space bus works and is loaded. I'm quite pleased with the system I set up for that, especially as it doesn't use any logistics bots. In the future, once you're ready to head off to other planets, having the spaceship is really convenient. You can fly it to orbit above whatever planet you want to go to, and then drop down in a rocket capsule and place a rocket landing pad, allowing your first rocket to land safely exactly where you want it, and without destroying a load of its contents. This leads to a massive saving in fuel and rocket parts. I hope this video has been useful and gives you some good ideas for getting going. Don't worry too much about bringing in excessive resources up into space, they're bound to get used up eventually. You will find that you need to build a lot of different and new machines up there to allow you to make the ingredients for the new sciences, but as long as you follow through the recipes carefully I'm sure you'll be okay. Remember, if you can make something on the planet and bring it up in that state, it's usually cheaper in logistics, plus you might be able to use productivity modules, or they only work in ground-based machines. This covers things like motors, engines, circuits, and even the rough data substrates for the memory cards you'll need in huge quantities later. If there's anything else you think I should make a tutorial about, please let me know. I'm always interested in new ideas. Also, please make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. I hope I'll see you in the next one or at the next stream. But until then, thanks for watching and goodbye.